Hello and welcome back to the Second Chance to Live channel here on YouTube. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to watch this video presentation. Thank you. In today's video presentation, I'd like to share something that I found to be pivotal in our lives. This is the third part of the uh, article series that I wrote several years ago, Living with a Traumatic Brain Injury and in the Process of Grieving, Part 3. In the first two parts of this presentation, I share awarenesses that I had. In part three, I continue to share those awarenesses and the freedom that I found through addressing and confronting my denial. I want to encourage you to watch parts one and part two of this article being read as part one and part two is a precursor to part three of the article. I want to thank you for your time and for being here. You're an important part of my process and I always enjoy our times together. To read the article, I'll put my glasses on and bring up the article. You're also welcome to visit my website at Second Chance to Live at secondchancetolive.org. In the event that you have questions as you listen to this article being read, please send those questions to me. You may do so through the comment section here on YouTube or through my contact page on Second Chance to Live. As I said, at secondchancetolive.org. Here's the article, Traumatic Brain Injury and the Process of Grieving, Part 3. Hello and welcome back to Second Chance to Live. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to visit with me. Thank you. Yesterday I spoke about the first stage in my grieving process. In that post I shared how denial acted as an active adversary in my recovery process. I then went on to speak to the need to confront denial for the impact denial was having upon my life. In part one of this series, I used several met metaphors to describe the effect that denial was having upon my life. One of, one of these metaphors was the door. When I decided to confront denial, I became aware of how de my life had been in infected by a lie. As I examined the strategies that deny used to avoid the truth, I started having spiritual awakenings. One of these spiritual awakenings revealed that denial had been acting as a door and that denial denied access to any and all unwanted thoughts or feelings. In effect, whenever any unwanted thought or feeling sought to be heard or experienced, denial would be discounting and minimizing the relevance of those thoughts and feelings. Denial imposed a excuse me, denial imposed a code of avoidance to mask what needed to be addressed. Again, denial imposed a code of a code of avoidance to mask what needed to be addressed. Addressed. Denial through shame actively sought to silence my reality. In a denial system that seeks to maintain the re that reality does not exist, feelings are considered a threat, especially those feelings that trigger a sense of shame. Shame is different from guilt in that shame is a being wound. De debilitating guilt and debilitating shame are very similar in the effect that the individual is led to believe that they don't just make mistakes, but that they, they believe that they are a mistake. As a traumatic brain injury survivor living with an invisible disability, I was led to believe that because I did not live up to the expectations set forth by denial or in the denial system that I was living, I was a mistake. For many years, I internalized my inability to live up to expectations. Despite all of my efforts to prove that I was not a mistake, I still believe that I was a mistake. Because I was led to believe that I did not just make mistakes, but that I was a mistake, I remained in, the di in denial. For many years, I sought to justify my worth and value through people-pleasing, approval-seeking, and mind-reading. I attempted to do more to be more to be enough. When they when these strategies failed, I sought to discard parts of myself that I found to be displeasing to family members, friends, teachers, schoolmates, employers, and co-workers. 
in an attempt to prove that I was not a mistake. Slowly but progressively, denial stole bits and pieces, pieces of my reality. Again, slowly but pro progressively, denial stole bits and pieces of my reality and in essence who I was as an individual. In the process of discarding parts of my reality, I discarded parts of myself. As I mentioned in part two of this series, when I realized that denial was limiting my life, I made a decision to confront denial. When I began to confront denial, I experienced various reactions. Among these reactions was anger. Anger at myself and angry anger at other people, and most of all, anger at my reality. My anger many times came out sideways because I did not know how to express my anger in healthy ways. I was angry at my deficits and limitations. I was angry at life in general because I felt helpless in many ways. In the process of confronting both my and other people's denial, Per my reality, I discovered that I had and held resentments toward people, places, churches, educational institutions, and employers. Further confrontation of my denial revealed that I also had and held resentments towards myself. This is the end of part three of the article series in video format. I want to thank you for being here. Again, please do not give up on yourself, a loving God, or your process, because more will be revealed to us in time. The pieces of the puzzle will come together in the correct order and at the right time. I'll say so long for now. Have a great day, and God bless both you and your family. So long now.